the U.S. Air Force's A-10 Thunderbolt II, widely known as the War Thog, has long been a symbol of rugged and effective close air support. Introduced in the late 1970s, the A-10 War Thog was specifically designed to support ground troops by eliminating enemy armored vehicles, fortifications, and battlefield threats in general. Its defining feature, the 30mm Avenger rotary cannon, combined with a heavily armored airframe and extraordinary loitering capabilities, made it uniquely suited for low-altitude, low-speed close air support in hostile environments. Elder aircraft, for example the lightly built multi-role fighters, would struggle to survive and perform effectively in this context. Over decades of service, the Warthog took part in conflicts ranging from the 1991 Gulf War to operations in Afghanistan, the Balkans, and against ISIS. Yet, as the U.S. Air Force approaches the final phase of the aircraft service life, a fascinating evolution has emerged around mid-2025. The A-10 has begun to assume an unassuming role as a counter-drone platform, employing laser-guided rockets to fight unmanned aerial threats. The shift is not as improbable as it may initially seem. The A-10's design, optimized for slow, low-altitude flights with high maneuverability and dogfighting capabilities, offers inherent advantages in the fight against unmanned air threat. Long-endurance drones, especially propeller-driven or low-performance attack drones, represent a threat that requires similar responses as the Warthog was originally built to deliver against armored vehicles. Slow speed, long loiter time, and low altitude enable the A-10 to deliver sustained firepower against armored targets. Similar qualities work well against a swarm of kamikaze drones as well, allowing a single A-10 to take out several incoming drones in one sortie. The aircraft's ability to loiter near the battlefield for extended periods coupled with its capacity to carry a substantial payload of precision-guided rockets, makes it a surprisingly effective platform for targeting these small, low-signature threats. The Warthog is well-suited for defending specific areas against long-endurance, low-speed drones. Its lack of an onboard radar, often cited as a limitation, is mitigated by the use of targeting pods and data-linked target information from other aircraft or ground control stations. Effectively, the A-10 can be vectored toward incoming drones and take them out with its guided rockets, despite the absence of organic long-range detection. At the heart of this new capability is the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System, or APKWS, which is not a missile or a weapon in itself, but a cheap laser guidance kit developed by BAE Systems, which turns simple unguided rockets into precision-guided missiles. In fact, we are at the second iteration of this guidance kit, and it should be called the APKWS-2. This guidance kit has been fitted to the ubiquitous 70mm Hydra rocket that are originally intended for air-to-ground operations. As it turned out, Hydra rockets fitted with the APKWS-2 has proven capable in a short-range air-to-air roll against drones and cruise missiles. By integrating a semi-active laser seeker into the rocket's mid-section, the system transforms a previously unguided ordnance into a precision strike weapon, with a stated range of around 7 miles or 12 kilometers when fired from fixed-wing aircraft at altitude. These guided rockets can track laser-designated targets, generally through onboard targeting pods, the addition of a proximity fuse on the rockets further enhances effectiveness against aerial drones, enabling a detonation near the target even without a direct hit, a capability that is valuable against small, fast-moving drones. 
Operational evidence suggests that the A-10 has already employed the APKWS in this air-to-air -air role. Recent deployments to the Middle East have produced imagery of A-10 bearing markings indicative of drone kills, including long-range one-way attack drones used in regional conflicts by countries like Iran. While official confirmation remains limited, the integration of APKWS-2 rockets with the A-10 represents a significant adaptation of a legacy platform to meet contemporary threats. The aircraft's substantial rocket payload capacity offers an advantage over traditional air-to-air -air missiles. Most importantly, these laser-guided rockets are cheap and plentiful, which are necessary qualities for any munitions designed to fight massed drones. They allow for precise engagement without requiring the aircraft to use the far more expensive radar-guided or infrared-guided missiles. Even the least expensive guided missiles, such as a Sidewinder, can cost several hundred thousand dollars per round. Whereas an APKWS equipped rocket costs a fraction of that. This cost effectiveness allows the A 10 to engage swarms or multiple targets without a high price tag. The A 10 also brings to the table a substantial magazine depth when armed with these rockets, enabling multiple engagements during a single sortie. The 70mm rockets are smaller and lighter than traditional air-to-air -air missiles, meaning an aircraft can carry several pods simultaneously. This is a critical factor when facing saturation attacks by drones or low-end cruise missiles. The combination of accuracy, affordability, and payload size allows the A-10 to serve as a cost-effective and efficient air defense, complementing faster fighters and rotary wing platforms that are also equipped with laser-guided rockets. The APKWS-2 is a highly flexible and modular guidance kit. The system allows different warheads to be combined with the rocket's motor and guidance kit allowing the A-10 or other carrying platforms to customize the warhead depending on the intended target. Whether they be light vehicles, fortification, heavy armor, or other tactical targets, by using a suitable warhead with a proximity fuse, the Warthog can switch between traditional close air support and counter drone operations with minimal adjustment. Operational testing of the A-10's counter-drone capability began years ago, with initial evaluations demonstrating the system's effectiveness against both drones and cruise missiles. In previous exercises, the 70mm rockets had successfully engaged unmanned aerial targets using laser designation, including scenarios in which drones were destroyed without direct hit thanks to the proximity fuse. Real-world deployments have confirmed the practicality of this approach, with documented kill markings on A-10s returning home from the Middle Eastern theater. This shows that the aircraft is increasingly employed in asymmetric conflicts in the Middle East. Historically, the A-10 strengths lie in durability, loitering ability, and large payloads. Its airframe incorporates titanium armor to protect the cockpit and vital systems, more robust manual flight controls, and an engine layout that reduces vulnerability to foreign objects damage. It can absorb hits from 23mm armor-piercing rounds and continue flying even with structural damage a characteristic that has allowed it to operate in high-stress environments for decades. These same traits prove advantageous in the counter-drone role, where the aircraft may need to maintain station in contested airspace while employing guided rockets against swarming or dispersed aerial drones. Yet, there are limitations. The A-10 is not designed for high-speed interception. Against fast-moving, high-performance drones or supersonic cruise missiles, 
the Warthog is far less effective, as it cannot run down multiple targets quickly. In these scenarios, faster jets equipped with radar-guided missiles should be far better suited. However, for many tactical drones that are increasingly defining modern warfare, including propeller-driven or long-range one-way attack drones, the A-10's flight profile, endurance, and cheap short-range guided munitions make it a formidable response. By integrating into a broader network of sensors and command and control systems, the A-10 can extend the coverage of air defense umbrellas with a low-cost and survivable platform. The reorientation of the A-10 toward counter-drone operations also illustrates a broader trend in military aviation, legacy platforms being adapted to address emerging threats. The Warthog was designed during the Cold War for tank busting and close air support. Today, however, its skills are being applied to a digital battlefield where unmanned systems proliferate. Its airframe is remarkably suited to engaging threats that were not even envisioned during its original design. In many ways, this adaptation represents a swan song for an iconic Cold War aircraft. Its final mission, not against the massed tank formations of the Warsaw Pact, but against the small, numerous, and increasingly lethal unmanned systems of the modern battlefield. Looking forward, there are prospects for further enhancements. Developments such as seeker kits for the APK WS2 could offer fire and forget capabilities, increasing engagement rates and flexibility in more challenging scenarios. Additional warhead types and guidance improvements promise to extend the platform's operational relevance, even as the A-10 airframe ages. For now, the A-10 continues to operate in this niche role, providing an affordable and effective means to counter a rising threat that has become central to modern conflict, kamikaze drones. The A-10's adaptation to counter-drone warfare represents a fascinating evolution of a proven aircraft. Its low-speed agility, survivable airframe, and payload capacity make it uniquely suited to counter the emerging threat of unmanned aerial systems. The integration of previously unguided rockets with laser guidance and proximity fuse transforms a classic close air support platform into something else altogether. By leveraging existing capabilities and pairing them with innovative solutions, the US Air Force has extended the operational relevance of the A-10 to what is likely the final chapter of its service life. In a world dominated by rapid technological change, the Warthog's evolution underscores the value of adaptable platforms and repurposing legacy systems to meet modern military challenges.